The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. One of the most joyous social occasions in life is the marriage of a man and woman who love each other. In spite of some negative moral trends and declining numbers of weddings, traditional marriages between a man and a woman are very much alive around the world. Stable marriages build happy families, and stable families strengthen neighborhoods and communities and nations. A wedding is a joyous occasion. Family and friends support the bride and groom and celebrate the beginning of a new family with music, flowers, and feasting. The engaged couple exchange vows before God. Their formal public commitment begins a lifetime together. The bride and groom may even say traditional words such as, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death do us part. Some of you watching this program may be considering marriage. You will want to thoroughly prepare for this lifelong commitment. What principles will you apply to ensure a happy and stable marriage? Our Tomorrow's World free booklet, God's Plan for Happy Marriage, will give you tried and tested keys for a successful and happy marriage. It's absolutely free. Just request your free copy. Be sure to write down the contact information on your screen. Marriage can be joyous, but it can also be very challenging. I know from years of personal experience. My wife and I have been married for more than 50 years, and sometimes we face difficulties because of our human nature. But your Bible gives successful keys for a godly marriage. You need to apply these universal principles in your marriage. You need to know the seven keys to a joyous marriage. Stay tuned. Warm greetings to all our friends around the world. The family is the building block of any society, and a marriage between a man and a woman is the beginning of that family. As a minister, I've had the privilege of conducting numerous marriages over the years. A typical wedding might include words such as, there can be no more joyous ceremony than this we now enter. Marriage is a natural union, but a divine institution ordained of God. It was established not by man, but by the eternal God at creation, and derives its authority from the divine laws of God, immutable and unchangeable. On today's program, we'll briefly discuss seven keys to a joyous marriage, and we'll be offering an inspiring free booklet titled, God's Plan for Happy Marriage. Be sure to write down the number on your screen to order your free copy. You can also order your free copy on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. My friends, as I mentioned earlier, my wife and I have been married for more than 50 years. I had an engineering background and she had a music background. I was more analytical in my thinking and she was more subjective in her thinking. Now, those should complement one another, but frankly, it took some adjustment. One of the keys that helped us in our adjustment was key number one for a joyous marriage, communicate in love. How often do couples tune one another out in their conversations? Effective communication means effective listening as well as speaking. We should listen for understanding. Try to understand the other person's point of view. Try to understand the other person's feelings and needs. Demonstrate respect by giving your full attention. The Apostle Paul gives us a fundamental principle in communicating effectively in Ephesians 4 verse 15 but speaking the truth in love, we may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ. Some people speak the truth in hate, but a Christian who is maturing in Christ will be concerned for the effect of his words and message on the listener. When you talk with your husband or wife, do you demonstrate concern and care? Do you communicate respect? Certainly we need to be patient with one another. 
Remember 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4, Love suffers long and is kind. The NIV states it this way, Love is patient, love is kind. Be conscious in your conversations to speak the truth in love. In our fast-paced life, husbands and wives may go in different directions and hardly have time to speak to one another. Some studies have shown that many couples average less than 20 minutes a week in conversation. But there's a way to capitalize on the brief time you have together, and that is the four-minute contact rule. In their book, Contact the First Four Minutes, Dr. Leonard Zunin and his wife Natalie Zunin state this, quote, The success or failure of a marriage can depend on what happens between a husband and wife during just eight minutes of the day four in the morning upon awakening, and four when you are reunited after the working day. Your language, attitude, or expression at the beginning of the day can affect the whole relationship. Learn to express a positive, loving attitude for the first four minutes you're together at the beginning of the day. Make a special effort to communicate in love. Sometimes couples get into a habit of arguing. You can almost predict the provocation and the response because it's happened so many times. Suppose you're arguing with your wife. The same old argument is taking place. She says, John, you are stuck up, obnoxious, arrogant, and vain. The common response is to come back with an even more hurtful insult. But notice this antidote for the situation in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 15, verse 1. A soft answer turns away wrath. You could respond with a soft answer such as, Well, I'm sorry that I gave you that impression. Sometimes I use even a more simple response to a criticism such as, Thank you. That soft answer will often diffuse the same old argument you've had dozens of times. On the other hand, the rest of Proverbs 15.1 gives us this warning. But a harsh word stirs up anger. Use a soft answer the next time your argument begins in your home. Use terms demonstrating courtesy and respect such as, please, thank you, you're welcome. Key number one to a joyous marriage is communicate in love. We'll discuss more keys in the next part of our program, but first I'd like to offer you this inspiring free booklet, God's Plan for Happy Marriage. This booklet will give you more strategies and principles than we have time for on this program. Here are some of the keys and principles that will help you. Build a God-centered marriage, heartfelt communication, learn to forgive, and romance is vital. This free booklet will give you the biblical keys to a joyous marriage and it will help you improve and enrich your marriage. It's free of charge and there's no obligation. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy of God's Plan for Happy Marriage. Just ask for the booklet on Happy Marriage. You would also order this free booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org or you can write to us at one of our regional addresses. For today's free informative offer, send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. Or call this toll-free number, 1-800-236-236. 0531. That number again is 1 800 236 0531. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World Magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World, call now. In the first part of our program, we saw that key number one to a joyous marriage is communicate in love. Key number two to a joyous marriage is Practice loving romance. You've heard the expression, it's the little things that count. Every kind word of appreciation makes a difference. Research has also shown that hugs can reduce stress, but they also encourage loving unity. 
Often when my wife and I leave each other to work on separate projects at home, we'll hug, and at other times spontaneously as well. Years ago, I read an insurance report that stated husbands who kiss their wives before leaving for work have fewer auto accidents and earn 30% more than those who do not kiss their wives. I made it a regular habit to kiss my wife before leaving the house for work. One day, I did not kiss her and backed my car into a tree. Even though there was little damage, I make sure I kiss her every morning. Other loving and thoughtful deeds help keep romance alive. A thoughtful and caring husband will often give his wife a bouquet of flowers on an anniversary or at other times as a total surprise. A creative and caring wife may surprise her husband with a special gift or a special meal. God intended husband and wife to become one flesh to enjoy the pleasures of godly sex and marriage. In the book of Genesis, God commanded married couples, be fruitful and multiply. My friends, the Bible is very clear. God created sex for marriage and family. Remember, the Bible also reveals that marriage is only between a man and a woman. In the Bible and in the real world of spiritual divine law, there's no such thing as same-sex marriage. And the Bible plainly reveals that any sexual relationship outside of marriage is sin. Let's read Hebrews 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers God will judge. Key number two to a happy marriage is practice loving romance. Key number three to a joyous marriage is give 100% to your mate. The old saying, marriage is a 50-50 proposition, is totally wrong. Upscale, modern, enlightened professionals may say, independence is our priority. We'll intellectually agree to work together, but I'll still reserve my personal escape route in case things don't work out right. But true love is giving without expecting anything in return. If you have your Bible, turn to Acts 20, verse 35. The Apostle Paul stated, And remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Or as the Moffat translation states, It's happier to give than to get. When two people both give 100%, you have a strong bond, a strong overlap that is going to guarantee flexibility and the ability to cope with crisis and problems. See what happens when both are giving 100%, but the 50-50 proposition is a built-in weak link in your relationship. One of the greatest gifts you can give is your time. Some years ago, when I was very active in sports, I tended to shortchange my wife in spending time together. I still remember the time when I determined to give my time to her in some special activity that would please her. She wanted to go canoeing. That was not my favorite activity, but we went canoeing on an East Texas lake on a Sunday afternoon, surrounded by pine trees, blue skies, waterfowl, and peace. What I considered a sacrifice of my time led to an enriched relationship. My wife enjoyed the activity and appreciated my effort. My friends make a commitment to give more than you have in the past. Be determined to find ways to give to your mate. Then you won't be so frustrated, and God will bless you in your relationship. As Jesus stated, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Key number three to a joyous marriage is give 100% to your mate. Key number four to a joyous marriage is fulfill your God-given responsibilities. God has given important responsibilities to husbands and wives. Listen, Ephesians 5 verse 25, husbands love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. God commands me as a husband to love my wife. 
I must give account to God for my attitude, service, and commitment to my wife. Notice that God does not give all kinds of escape clauses. He does not say, if your wife is perfect, then you love her. No, God commands you to love your wife. That's your responsibility. As we saw in key number three, you need to give 100% to your wife. Now, what does God instruct the wives? Ephesians 5, verse 22. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Again, ladies, God does not say that you submit only to the perfect husband. I don't know of any perfect husbands. Only Christ is perfect. But listen, as each of us fulfills his or her own God-given responsibilities, God will bless the marriage even more. Notice what the Apostle Paul wrote in the previous verse, Ephesians 5, verse 21. He wrote that all Christians must maintain a thankful attitude, and notice this, submitting to one another in the fear of God. As husband and wife, you each have this responsibility to the other. Key number four to a joyous marriage is fulfill your God-given responsibilities. One married couple told me that they never had an argument. That is one hard statement to believe. Most of us married couples know we have human nature and human weaknesses. My wife and I have had arguments, not so much now after 50 years. But how do you reconcile and solve those arguments? We'll discuss more inspiring keys to a joyous marriage in the next part of our program. But first, I'd like to give you another opportunity to request our exciting free booklet, God's Plan for Happy Marriage. This booklet contains more vital keys to a fulfilling, loving, and joyous marriage than we have time for on this program. You need this informative and enlightening booklet on ensuring a happy marriage. Be sure to request your free copy. Call now. Today's offer is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. Visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. Find us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. On today's program, we've discussed four keys to a joyous marriage. Key number one to a joyous marriage is communicate in love. Key number two is practice loving romance. Key number three, give 100% to your mate. And key number four, fulfill your God-given responsibilities. The next vital key may be difficult for some who find fault and know the weakness and character flaws of their mate. If you have your Bible, turn to Philippians 2 and verse 3. Listen to God's instruction regarding our relationship with others. Philippians 2 verse 3. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Key number five to enrich your marriage is honor and respect your mate. Do you really value your mate? Do you respect him or her as a human being made in the image of God? Yes, your Bible instructs us to esteem, that is to value others better than ourselves. That doesn't mean you must respect every bad quality or bad habit of your mate, but look for his or her positive values. If you've been abusing your mate, physically or verbally, you need to repent. You need to humble yourself before God and ask His forgiveness. And you need to apologize to your mate as well. I know personally it's sometimes difficult to say, I'm sorry, but it can go a long way in healing and restoring a relationship. Keep in mind that you and your mate are heirs together of the grace of life, as it tells us in 1 Peter 3, verse 7. Husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. It's vital to understand how God values every human being, and that includes your mate, regardless of your opinion of him or her. Every human being on earth has the potential of being born into the divine family of God as a glorified immortal child of God. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 18, I will be a father to you, 
and you shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. My friends, always be conscious of your mate's awesome potential. Key number five for a joyous marriage is honor and respect your mate. Key number six is learn to forgive. How often do you have arguments in your family or in your marriage? We all need to exercise self-control, courtesy, honor, and respect. Sometimes the best strategy in an argument is to apply Proverbs 15, verse 1. A soft answer turns away wrath. Sometimes we need to admit our own responsibility. Perhaps we have personally contributed to the problem. I know it can be very difficult at times because our pride gets in the way. I've experienced that myself. But simply saying, I'm sorry, can go a long way in solving a conflict. And certainly we need to forgive one another. Remember the awesome instruction in your Bible, Ephesians 4, verse 32. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Colossians 3, verse 12 also emphasizes that point. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Have you learned to forgive? Dr. Meredith gives this perspective in our free booklet, God's Plan for Happy Marriage. Quote, learn to approach your mate constructively and talk it over, of course. But if some of these human foibles persist, even for years, then just keep right on forgiving. After all, would you rather scrape your burnt toast once in a while? Or would you rather live alone, do your own cooking, and have no one to talk to, or cuddle with on cold wintry nights? Never forget what Jesus commanded. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. That's Matthew 18 verses 21 and 22 from page 21 of our booklet. Key number six for a joyous marriage is learn to forgive. The seventh and final key will go a long way to reconcile, nurture, and heal a relationship. We'll discuss that in the conclusion of our program. But first, I'd like to offer you our inspiring free booklet, God's Plan for Happy Marriage. This booklet will help you in your study of the Bible and its principles for marital success. Perhaps some of your friends or relatives will be married soon. This booklet can give help in a new marriage as well as a long-established one. It's free of charge and there's no obligation. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy of God's Plan for Happy Marriage. Just ask for the booklet on Happy Marriage. You can also order this booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org or you can write to us at one of our regional addresses. For today's free informative offer, send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. Or call this toll-free number, 1-800-236-0531. That number again is 1-800-236-0531. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World, call now. On today's program, we've discussed six keys to a joyous marriage. One, communicate in love. Two, Practice loving romance. Three, give 100% to your mate. Four, fulfill your God-given responsibilities. Five, honor and respect your mate. And six, learn to forgive. The seventh and final key is extremely important. 
Key number seven to a joyous marriage is pray together. Now I realize you may be married to an unbeliever, in which case you simply need to pray every day for him or her and pray for your marriage. Strive to be a Christian example to your mate. First Peter, the third chapter, gives instructions to wives who have unconverted husbands. First Peter 3, verse 1. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. Your loving, giving Christian example can go a long way toward positively influencing your husband. Notice the emphasis is on the conduct, not on trying to argue your mate into your religion. Now, if both you and your mate personally pray, try praying together. It's amazing how many intimate and personal thoughts come out in our prayers. In that way, we're sharing with one another and with our God. Key number seven to a joyous marriage is pray together. My friends, ask God to help you apply these principles in your own life. Remember, you cannot force your mate to change. You can only change yourself. But your example of love and service can have a very positive influence on your mate. You cannot do it all on your own. You need the help of your Savior. As the Apostle Paul said in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. May God bless you, one man, one woman, and one marriage. And may He bless your marriage and your family as you strive to live by His Word. There are many more effective strategies and biblical keys to improving and enriching your marriage. Be sure to request our inspiring and informative booklet, God's Plan for Happy Marriage. It's free of charge and there's no obligation. This helpful booklet gives you God's perspective and the spiritual and practical keys to enrich the most intimate of human relationships. You can improve your marriage, enrich your marriage, and even save your marriage. You can rejoice in a godly, joyous marriage. Just pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy of God's Plan for Happy Marriage. This booklet will also be very helpful to those preparing for a wedding. Just call the number on your screen or contact us through our website, tomorrowsworld.org. Just request the Happy Marriage booklet. We invite you to join us every week on Tomorrow's World or watch us online at any time. In the challenging and stressful times in which we live, you need the solid guidance that comes from your Bible. Gerald Weston, Wallace Smith, and I We'll continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ, the good news of the coming kingdom of God, and the exciting end time prophecies and their meanings. So be sure to join us again next week, right here at the same time. To view the Tomorrow's World telecast or request today's free offer, visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. Remember to find us on Facebook and be sure to follow us on Twitter. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.